everybody. Welcome back to uh, the studio. And uh, you can see Cheeto's here, raring to go. Uh, he knows it's time. Um, he's, he's ready. We're here. I'm Kimberly Einmo. Welcome back to the second block of the month Blitz class. Mr. Kim is here too behind the camera giving his signature wave. We'll see if we can pull him in front of the camera later on. But we are so glad that it's another Saturday and that we have the privilege of welcoming you into our home uh, for just a couple hours of fun. Is anyone tuning in yet, Mr. Kim? Can you see anyone joining? Yes. Okay, just a couple minutes because we like to start right at 10. I'm sorry, 1. Um, and I, we need to ask right away, um, can you all hear us, both of us? Mr. Kim, it means you're going to have to say something too. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> Everyone give me a thumbs up if, if we're sounding okay. The mic issue is always something we want to be really aware of so that uh, later on when Mr. Kim is reading questions, he can read them that everyone can hear them. I'm seeing um, some thumbs up come across. Yay, yay, yay. Great. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, good, good, good. That's always a relief. Um, we're just so happy to be here again. What a privilege it is. Thank you for taking time wherever you are uh, to join us on Saturday, which is typically, you know, family day. It's weekend, but you're, you're taking time to join us. And gosh, we are so appreciative of that. We just hope to be a blessing to you today um, to just, you know, provide some fun and, and new tips and tricks. And I just have to start by saying thank you to everyone for the tremendous response we had to the first class two weeks ago. Um, the views were great. Oh, and along those lines, can I ask a big favor? I know I ask this every time and I don't want to wear it out, but if you wouldn't mind sharing this right now, there's a little share button that you can touch. It, it just puts it out there on your timeline or on your, um, I guess, your homepage and just allows people to see it. Um, and it only goes to your friends depending on the privacy settings that you have. If you would feel comfortable doing that, I would sure appreciate it. But um, we, we are so grateful for um, all the, the um, likes and the shares and the comments from the first class. And especially, I loved seeing people posting their blocks, their completed blocks. That, I mean, that just made me so excited every time. And I tried to get out there and comment or like or put hearts on every one that I saw. So if for some reason you posted a picture of your blocks and I didn't comment on it, it's because I didn't see it. So I will make every effort to try to make sure um, that I see all of the photos, but it would help if you would tag me, um, just tag Kimberly Imo. That, that way I can see it for sure and I will make sure to um, comment and, and just, you know, I love the pictures. I love the pictures with the kitties a lot of people show their cats with their blocks. That's so awesome. If you have puppy dogs, we don't discriminate between the furry friends. So, you know, just share whatever you've done. So, um, are we getting people in, you think, Mr. Kim? Oh, yeah. We're getting them from Tennessee, Texas, yeah. Florida, even California. Yeah. So far, I haven't seen anybody say anything from international yet. But uh -oh, they'll come uh -oh, through. Uh -oh. Yeah, I hope we can get some international folks. But I'm so happy for all you Americans uh, that, you know, wherever you're from, wherever you're joining, um, that's really exciting. When I said 10 o'clock, it's because here on the West Coast, it is 10 a.m. I know on the East Coast, it is 1. Um, so we're all good. <laughs> I just keep forgetting um, that, you know, we're three hours behind and I always have to keep thinking in Eastern Standard Time. Ooh, but anyway. We got one from Tenerife, Canary Islands. Yeah. All right. Oh, yay. And she's a friend of mine now. So we've been conversing back and forth. Is it Sue? Was it Sue? It already passed by, ah, sorry. It already passed by, it's okay. Um, hi there, in Tenerife. All right, so this is the quilt, and, and y'all know it because you're all involved in it, and I'm so excited. Um, and today, we're doing blocks D, E, and F. So the first one up is this one right here, and then that's D, and E is over here, this one. And F, where is F? Right in the middle. Um, no, 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 no. I, am, I lost it. Oh, here, here it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> when you're standing right next to it, it's a little harder to see than you would think. Um, so anyway, those are the blocks. 
blocks we're going to work on today, and I've got lots of great tips and tricks to share with you. So come on over, let's go to the cutting table, and let's get started. Just don't trip on the wires, Mr. Pim. I'll try not All to. All right. Oops. No, just kidding. <laughs> so if there's any questions, be sure and post them. We're going to have some great Fabulous Genomi people, they're answering questions too. I try to go back and read them all and answer when I can. If I didn't get to yours last time, it's because sometimes they come in later and I sometimes miss them. There was a lot of comments last time, but I try to get to uh, try to get to all of them and I and I will do so with this one too. But here we are. This is the block we're making, block D. And um, I just wanted to, to show you the actual block. Now I'm going to be making my version in, with a white background so you can see everything that I'm sewing and everything that I'm doing. And I wanted to just review just a little bit with you. We did a lot last time with the rulers, but just in case you need a little refresher, um, I wanted to just go over the ruler again, especially the precision flying geese and half square triangle ruler. Yes, question? Hey, no, not so much a question, but so far I've seen two people say that you your mic is a little low. It's hard to hear from oh, you. Wow. Um, okay. I got you all plugged in correctly. Okay. I, I will try to talk just a little louder and um, sorry about that. We're, we're trying really hard. Maybe we should, I don't know, it's all the way up and they said put it right in the middle. Boy. I think Kimberly's mic isn't working. Uh-oh. That's not good. That is not good. We may have You to... know what? I'm going to set this down so all I can right. work on your mic here. All right, maybe we just have to switch it out to the other one. Yeah. Um, but that'll be a little tricky. I may have to stand off camera for that. Hold on. Let's try. Are you sure that's mine? Or we can plug mine into this one, that little outlet right there. Is that any better? Any better, guys? Okay. They'll let us know as soon yeah, as we'll let us know the timeline catches comes up. Through. So, um, otherwise, we have one more option we can do. Boy, I'm really sorry about this. Some this... people say they hear you fine. Okay. All right. I'm going to just keep going. Yeah. Sorry, folks. We're really trying. It's really hard. I wish I could, like, get a professional in here <laughs> to, to wire everything. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. <laughs> but you all are so patient and so kind to hang in there with us while we work through all the issues. Okay, so we're gonna dig in. Now, I wanted to just review the ruler just briefly. This ruler is so brilliant and it does so many wonderful things, but we're only gonna take the things as they come because this is a whole skill building quilt. And today we're really focusing on using our half square triangles. So remember side A is in the magenta and you'll see side A and all the numbers and words will face you when you're on side A. And that makes the, the flying geese or the quarter square triangles. We're not there yet in the pattern. We're not working with quarter square triangles just yet. So we're gonna turn it over and only for today, we're going to be using side B of the ruler, which is in the mint green. Remember, those are mint green and, and magenta pink for ovarian cancer and breast cancer awareness, the colors. And I know a lot of you feel passionately about women's health issues, as I do. And so we're going to be using this to make half square triangles today. And we're going to be using this line right here, the two and a half inch line. Oh, I think it's a glare, honey. Let's see if we can hide the glare. Is that any better? Now you can see the, that we're going to be using the two and a half inch line to make our half square triangles. All right. So side B of that ruler is all we're going to be doing, but we're going to be cutting together. So what I want to suggest going forward, because we do have class, uh, the third class and the fourth class scheduled, I'll talk more about that at the end, but we're going to be covering the entire quilt, but we're taking it in, in really um, small chunks so that we can just do a little bit at a time within a couple weeks. It gives you a chance to catch up and go at your own pace. Please don't feel like you have to keep up with the pace here. I'm just going through everything so I can get all the great tips and techniques out there and the tricks that I can show you. And then you can go back and watch this again and again. It will always be posted on the Janome Sewing Classroom page. So. I think we're still having trouble with that, Mike. So let me try one other thing here. Someone else is saying something? A couple of them Oh are. my goodness. I am so sorry. Let's try. All right, I'm gonna set up. And while, while he's fooling with that, I am gonna go ahead and ask you to pull 
your strips. Um, do you need me to stop for yeah. a second? Okay. Because they're going to lose you anyways. All right. Okay. I plugged right. the mic into a different slot. A different Let's see slot. how that works. So uh, go ahead and start talking. Okay. And they'll give us feedback. <laughs> He did try a different slot. Let's see if that works. Anybody a thumbs up yet? Well, yeah. remember the, there's a delay. People right. have been saying, some of them say they can hear it perfectly, uh, and others say that yours is a bit distant when I walk away from you. Huh. So that means that the camera, the phone is somehow picking it up. Don't know how that works. All right. Um, we're trying. Hang in there. So what I want to encourage you to do before the third class is to go through and pull the strips for the next three blocks that you will need. And in your handouts, and Mr. Kim, I don't know if you can focus in here. In your handouts, this is the, the page I'm on. Um, we're doing the block of the month, block D, month four, okay? And this is the block today. And I have listed all the fabrics that you need just for this block. So for the next three blocks, before the next class, go ahead and get those strips pulled ahead of time, maybe even pressed. It'll make things go faster and a little bit smoother. But even if you haven't done that today, go ahead, root around through your strips. What we're going to need today is your, um, your background fabric, two and a half inch strip. You're going to need magenta, royal, citrus, and stone and lagoon. So don't worry if you, you know, just start with me. Let's start with our background strip, all right? And I have my white background this time, and I'm going to lay it out here and line it up. And the other thing is, with these strips, if you get a chance, now I did demo this in the last class. If you're using the solidish roll and it has the pinked edges, take the time before the next class. And again, you just have to do it for the, the fabrics we're using for three blocks. Take the time to trim the pink edges down to two and a half. And I know some of you are like, boy, that just, what a pain I have to do that. Nah, you know what? It goes so fast and it makes life so much better and everything is more accurate and even. You'll get better results. It's worth taking just a little time. But let's just dive in now. And what we're going to Before you do, get started on that, can you yes. move that mic over to your collar? Okay, um, I've been told it's better right in front of me. Some of them have said that when you look okay. down, the sound comes better. All right, and then we're going to move past. And then we're going to move past that, or oh. you'll start using my mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, we'll try that. All right, here we go. Let's get on to this background fabric, okay? And you're going to need one strip, and what we're going to be doing is... You always want to cut your units exactly as they are listed in order on the page. I've done that specifically. I've really worked through all the nitty gritty and the best way to use your fabrics um, so that there's no waste. So if you cut them as they are listed, it's going to go a lot better. I mean, you could cut them out of order, but why? You know, just follow the order as listed. And we're going to cut them all right here. And here's something. When was the last time you changed the blade in your rotary cutter? I actually changed mine yesterday because it was getting a little bit dull. And you know you can save your old blades for like cutting wrapping paper at Christmas. There's all kinds of things you can do. But you would want to take and wherever you store that blade, um, you would want to write on the storage unit paper or something so that you know, or just old blade. I actually have a rotary cutter that I wrote on the back of it. I wrote paper. So I know I can use those old blades for cutting paper or cardboard. If you are working with, you know, opening moving boxes or things, you can use those for cutting cardboard. So, you know, they're not wasted, but you do want a fresh new blade whenever possible so that you're cutting really accurately. You don't want to be chopping along and you know having little nicks in it because it just makes it much harder. You want it to feel like a hot knife through butter and that's what a new blade will do for you. All right, so we're going to be cutting 12 side B triangles from our background fabric. And I'm going to lay this right out here, right on the edge. I've already trimmed off my selvage edges here and you might can see that um, we're going to switch. Yeah. Oh, enough with the, I, it, I would have to almost disrobe to do this. Well, that's what everybody's recommending, okay? <laughs> All right. Just, Mr. Kim take... may not look up with the camera right now. 
as I take this out. <laughs> I don't want, uh, you know, 4,000 people seeing me coming apart here. All right. Now, this means I have the shorter cord, honey. Right. I'll so, stay with you. Um, you'll have to not go too far. Duh, you're getting awfully close with that camera. All right. So sorry, everybody. All right, we will really have to look into just maybe buying all new mics. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> all right, is this any better? <laughs> Sorry, had to kind of go through the clothes to <laughs> get the mic out and put another one in. So didn't want to scare you all with that. Boy, talk about embarrassing on camera. Can I get some likes for that? Some thumbs up or hearts or something, just so I know I'm feeling the love out there. <laughs> You just never know what's going to happen in the studio. All right, so where was I? Cutting background. We're going to be using side B of the ruler um, to go ahead and cut. How many did I say? 12 side B triangles. Now, I want to point out that I do have this doubled, okay? So I have two layers. I have my strip folded in half. And if you have a background fabric with a print, it doesn't matter if it's right sides together or wrong sides together, it really doesn't matter. All right, I have a solid, so it really doesn't matter. But if you have a print, you just wanna fold your strips and line it up. Take off the selvage edge, if you have a selvage edge, and I'm lining it up with the two and a half inch line here. Hold the ruler in place and we're gonna cut these units, all right? And remember the pinky trick. Remember to keep your pinky off the ruler, but right next to the ruler on the mat. Then your ruler really won't move, okay? It won't move. You don't wanna keep your pinky way out here. Keep your pinky right next to the ruler on the mat, and your ruler will not move. I haven't met anyone yet who doesn't have enough pinky strength to hold their ruler in place. All right, our first two are cut. Now we have to cut a total of 12. So that means we need to make six cuts. So I've rotated it again. Don't flip it over, okay? It's a rotating. You keep it up on side B, so side B is visible, and you rotate the ruler just like this. You spin it around, so now it lines up on the last diagonal edge that you cut. The little lopped off end of the ruler lines up on the bottom of the strip. Hold the ruler in place with your pinky and cut. There we go, see that? There's two more, so we have four. Rotate again, rotate it around, line up the two and a half inch line on the bottom of the strip. The little lopped off edge is now on the top. We've got that last cut edge on the edge of the ruler. Hold it in place, cut. There we go, that's six. Rotate, all right. And if you really wanted to go fast, you could have done two strips layered together for four layers, but that's all right, this works just fine. And we're not in that much of a hurry today. All right, and are we getting any better with the sound? Is the sound any better now? We got a lot of hearts and thumbs up, but okay. there are still a couple of comments about when you're closer to the camera, they hear you better. So it might be that none of the mics are working. It might be, boy, that's scary. Some people are saying they're finally getting the hang of the ruler, that's good. All right, we're gonna do one more thing with this. I want you to take this out. And we're gonna try one more thing that we can do. We have a little adapter here that we can take out of the, the phone and see if we can plug directly into the phone with, if we have to. Oh, look who's here, hi Cheetah Puff. Hey Puffs, yeah, he came to check everyone. Everyone say hi to Cheeto. I thought he was here to fix the microphone. <laughs> of course. All right, we tried something new now. Oh, you're unplugged. Yeah. You, why don't you plug back in so that we're trying that splitter thing. Here, I'll get it. Because we want people to be able to hear the questions. All right, Cheeto. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, thanks, buddy. All right, the other thing that we need from our background is we need some rectangles. We need eight one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. So go ahead and grab your pre-cuts ruler, your precision pre-cuts ruler, the big square. Now you could use the jelly roll ruler or any other ruler, but let's let's use this because this is a really fun ruler to use. And I want you to see how easy it is. Well, I'm getting a lot of that's great now. 
Much better. So, so much better. Hi, Cheeto. Yay. Yay. Okay, now I put the other mic on me. Um, if people want to hear me, give me a thumbs up on that one or let me know if they can hear me too. Yep. Hey, bud. Are you here to supervise? You are here to supervise. Yay. This is what Cheeto does. Cheeto does this best. All right, but come over here. We're going to keep cutting our background strip and we're going to cut one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. And I think we need eight of those. Always go back and check. So there, you'll notice that there are these mint green lines and these are all the most commonly used sizes that you cut over and over and over again like one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles so you can see here after we finished cutting our side b triangles here is the little one and a half this is the one and a half inch line and here's the two and a half inch line right here and we're going to line that up and we're gonna go ahead and cut. And there's two rectangles right there. And once you cover the raw edge of the fabric with the mint green lines, you see you don't want it sticking out to the left side of the line, and you don't wanna see matte. You don't wanna see matte between the line. Once you cover the raw edge of the fabric, once it disappears under the mint green lines, you know that you are positively cutting 100% accurately. And the great thing is you don't have to go looking for it real hard. It's really easy to see at a glance exactly what you want to cut and then to make the cut. All right, see that? So now you know these are exactly right. All right, and we need eight of those. That's four. Here's the next two, six, and eight. See how fast that goes? So really, this goes super fast. And now our background fabric is done. We're done with that. So let's set that aside for now. And the next thing on the list is magenta, I think. Yes, all right, and so the first bullet there under magenta, and this is your magenta strip, you're going to need, I think, four two and a half inch squares. So that's easy. Again, use your precision pre-cuts ruler, and the two and a half inch lines are marked in the mint green, so you can lay this right down on top of your strip and see at a glance. See how fast that was? I can see absolutely at a glance exactly where the two and a half inch squares are. All right, are you loving the use of the ease of use of this ruler? How easy it makes it to see exactly what you're cutting. Those, those raw edges are so easy to cover with this, and you don't have to work hard at looking for what you're cutting. There, we're done with the squares, and now the only thing we need are um, eight side B triangles from that. So we'll go back to our flying geese ruler. We're on side B. We're going to line this up with the strip and we're gonna cut. And don't worry, I would never cut his little his little kitty toes. So no or tail? No more <laughs> tail. Don't worry, I'm very careful with, with our Cheeto. It wouldn't hurt him for the world. There's four. Remember, I'm cutting pairs because I have two strips. You always wanna cut with at least two pieces whenever possible. <laughs> yeah. Cheeto, it's okay. I'm he wants sorry. to be on camera. <laughs> Six, you all are so patient with us uh, to put up with our menagerie here. We have quite the menagerie, and here's eight. All right, we're done with magenta. Woohoo! See how fast it goes? These rollers, I designed these so you really can just work efficiently, accurately, but fast. I mean, you don't want to spend all day cutting because you want to get to the sewing on your machines, which is the fun stuff. All right, next we have Royal, and we need four two and a half inch side B triangles. So pull up your Royal strip, and again, make sure it, you've got two layers, and we're gonna cut a total of four of these. So I only need to make two cuts, all right? I just need to cut, there's two, spin it or rotate it, line it back up, four. Okay. And have we gotten any comments about the mics now? Are we, are we better with the mics now? Yeah, everything's saying it's just fine. Great. Yay. You all are so patient. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for your understanding. All right. Now we move uh -oh, on. Uh-oh. Somebody, now they're saying the mic isn't on and lost your voice again. Oh. Wow. No. Mate, well, let's just keep going. It might not be us, 
but unless a lot of people heard a click it. and then we lost her sound again oh. sound feeding badly uh, that may not be us that might be something through facebook because we're all I set up know. yeah is anyone else saying that just one person or? no it's been a couple her mic is off again lots of people wow maybe we should go out and come back in no i don't think we should do that but um wow all right maybe it's because do. yours is covered in there all right i'm gonna try what marina said some again. people are saying i have sound lost sound badly guys we're so sorry had a hard time getting on we but just now bought these brand new mics and i don't think they're working i can hear it's fine just lower all right should we go back and switch it the other way no i don't think so all right so i'll tell you what mr kim do we have another one of these adapters somewhere well um, i'm going to set this up to watch you while i go look right. for an adapter all right so i think you know where i keep my little headphones and the travel stuff yeah there's one in there we'll try a different adapter he'll go look for that but he'll set it up so he can kind of uh step out of it and you're gonna have to unplug yourself yeah it's okay pointed down at the well, right board now. right now all right so we're gonna keep cutting he's gonna go look for a different adapter maybe there's a short in this one or something and we'll get it worked out i promise um he's gonna step out that's of the room for a minute. yeah that's the problem with live but you all are very patient again uh, we we want to make this as good as we can and i am so sorry apologizing all over we practice and practice and it seems to work and then we get going like this and you just never know so you just, you know, in the scheme of life, this is a small thing. <laughs> yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's frustrating. But in the scheme of life, you know, this is this is small. And we can fix it and move on. All right, so citrus. It's time to cut citrus. And we only need one two and a half inch square from citrus. So again, use your precision pre-cuts. Here's our little pile of things that we've cut already. And we just want to lay this down right like this. Look at how easy that is. And we're going to go ahead and cut that square. There we go. Citrus is done. Put your citrus aside. And the last two things we want to cut are stone and lagoon. Now I'm going to be really radical here. <laughs> I'm going to have you cut four layers at once. Because I know you guys can do it. <laughs> I mean, you know, these are just rectangles. So what I have done is I've layered my stone, two layers of stone. See that I have my strips folded uh, wrong sides together and I have my lagoon, all right? And I have that strip. So I have a total of four layers right here. But if you have a good rotary cutter, you can do this. We need four one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. And we're gonna go ahead and cut. There's two of each. And we need four of each of these colors. There's two of each. And here is another one. Here we go. Here we go. And now we have four. Okay. I'm going to unplug here. I got the other adapter. All right. We're going to unplug for a second. And he's going to switch it over. All right. Here we go. Yay. All right. This goes okay we're done we are done cutting for this block right so now we're gonna go ahead and sew we're gonna take all of our little pieces and we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna lay them all out all right and I think we're ready to go over and when you can let us know if that made any difference whatsoever and we'll make sure that the cords don't get run over by the chair. Are those two and a half strips, inch strips? Yes, they are from the solidish jelly roll. But you'll even need a two and a half inch strip from your background. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my iron. Whoops. Well, there we go. All right. Any better on the sound? Did that make a difference? Yay. You're back. <laughs> yes better so it must have Lots been a of short up. oh yay it must have been Sounds a short in that better. little thing that it's little really adapter because some people were saying that they were hearing some music also well there's no music in the house right. whatsoever good sound is great yeah okay so, so much better promise you we don't have any um <laughs> any music playing anywhere around here so it might be something weird it was a bad adapter just a bad adapter it just wore out let's remember to throw that one away 
Okay. Well, let's use it again and try to figure <laughs> it out. Come on. All right. So the first thing we want to do here is, and I've got some already laid out um, and my step out's already done in case we need to, to move ahead here. But the first thing I want to do is just kind of lay out these little strips right here. All right, let's just start with some easy sewing right away with some of these little units right here. We wanna sew a background to a stone, to a lagoon, to a background. So I find the easiest way to do that is just put the stone and the lagoon together. And, uh, okay, true confessions. <laughs> you like those? How many of you out there can't sew in shoes? <laughs> I want to see a thumbs up. Yes, I'm wearing flip-flops so I can kick them off under the table and sew in my bare feet. Anyone else feel like I do on that one? <laughs> now remember, you're going to want to have your machine all set up for the perfect scant quarter inch. Remember, use your O foot. Use your O foot with a guide. We have the OM foot, the OV foot. But if your machine has the capability of the HP foot in place, by all means, you should use the HP foot. It, it'll take not very long to get used to how awesome it is. But whatever machine you are sewing on, make sure you are sewing with the quarter inch stitch. Now your stitch length should be about 2.4. If your machine only does like 2.0 to 2.5, choose 2.5. The tighter your stitches, like a 2.0 or a 1.8, the more those stitches tend to dry in the fabric just a little bit and it can cause your units to shrink ever so slightly. But over the course of the block, that little shrinkage can add up. So 2.5 is just fine. If you have the ability to set it for 2.4, that's my preferred stitch length. I have really great results with it. And the other thing is you want a sharp needle like a Microtex or a quilty needle. You want to make sure your needle's fresh and new. And you want 50 weight cotton thread. All right. I can't believe how many barefoot sewers there are out there. <laughs> Thank you for the solidarity. <laughs> Thank you for that, everyone. I appreciate it. Yes, I did slide my shoes off to sew barefoot. Oh, I love it. I got to tell you, this is going to seem weird, but I really missed you all since the last time we were here. Two weeks was a long time. I was really anxious to see you all again and, you know, know that I can sit here and chat with you and just have fun. It, it, is, it is really awesome. Now, where did my other little pieces go, Kent? Why do the cutting instructions sometimes say RSU and RSD? Oh, great question. That's if you're using print fabrics, especially with your background. So right, RSU means right side up and RSD means right side down. So if your background fabric is a print, then you would follow the directions for right side up or right side down. Now with solid-ish, it doesn't really matter so much because yeah, it is a print fabric, but it's a modeled print. So it really doesn't matter so much. And the other thing is, even if you paid no attention to the right side up or right side down, and, and you cut, um, it, has a, it has to do with the way that these little units have a lopped off edge on one side and a pointy edge on the other, because like if we cut them in pairs, when you open it up, it becomes a mirror image. Even if you hadn't paid any attention to that, all it means is later on you'd have one extra dog ear to trim off, that's it. So your units are still completely usable. You haven't ruined anything. You haven't um, sacrificed any fabric. It's just something that if you want to pay attention to the right side up, right side down, based on your print, the print of your fabrics, it would save you from cutting an extra dog ear. That's what it means. I mean, I, I literally, when I'm writing patterns, I think of everything. <laughs> I want it to be thorough and I want it to be really, really good. So that's what that means. I hope that that helped explain it. And that lopped off edge is the thing that you use to give them their perfect quarter inch. Yes, seam. that's your built-in quarter inch seam allowance. Yes, it is. Now, if your machines have the option of the auto pivot feature, which is this little icon up here where it shows the little presser foot with the needle down, make sure you have it on. We want that little, um, that foot popping right up in between our units and that leaves the needle down into the machine and and that means you can push your unit under the presser foot right up to the needle so that the first bite goes right into the fabric did you see that 
it's brilliant. So if you have that option and you haven't been using it, by all means, now is the time to, to put that little, that little feature on and start using that option. Once you realize how brilliant the auto pivot feature is for piecing, for chain piecing, oh my goodness, you'll never go back. So let's go ahead and press these. And this time we are pressing towards the stone, all right? And how many of you, I think a lot of you kind of found the steady buddies after last week or after the last class, right? They're pretty awesome. All right, and did you know Steady Buddy has a new size? I think it's 20 by 24, which is perfect for working with uh, fat quarters. So check that out at SteadyBuddy.com. She's just a really good friend of mine, and you know I just love to support small businesses whenever I can. And and uh, you know it's when it's a product I love and use, and I don't I'm not getting any kickbacks from this. But if it's a product I love and use and find that it's helpful, I'm going to share it. Okay, so now all we have to do with our little uh, double rectangle units is sew background pieces on either side. So let's get that knocked out really fast, all right? Will there be plenty of fabric if I mess up a block? Yes. Not saying there that is. I did. No, there's plenty. You'll actually have, I think you'd have almost enough of your strips your, uh, from your jelly roll to make a whole other quilt. Really, there's I Amy. Mean, here's what I always say about, about jelly rolls. They're like rabbits. Those strips kind of multiply when you're not looking. And it's almost really impossible to use up an entire jelly roll. You've, you'll find that it's really quite hard to use them up. Did you know that a jelly roll bundle of 42 and a half inch strips is exactly two and a half yards of fabric? It is, inch per inch. Here's another little f fun factoid for you, that if you have a layer cake bundle, which is a layer cake, uh, is a bundle of fabrics made of 10 inch by 10 inch squares. If you have 40 of those, it is exactly the same inch per inch as uh, 42 and a half inch strips. So it's two and a half yards of fabric. Here we go. And you'll notice that I sewed some on to the the lagoon side and some onto the gray side it doesn't matter because we have to flip it around and then go ahead and sew on the other side so we're just sewing those units on let's get all those done and i, I would love to ask if anyone is sewing along with me right now um, but that would mean they'd have to stop sewing and answer <laughs> which kind of defeats the purpose um, sewing along. That's so. silly. <laughs> yeah, but we have a lot of fun, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, where's Mr. Cheeto? He should be here helping me at the sewing machine. Look over your right shoulder on the floor. Oh, he is here. He is here, folks. He's back behind me here. He's waiting for the, the time when he really needs to supervise. Don't get lots of, yes, we are sewing. Yay! All right. Those little units are done. Now, you'll notice how I have them pressed. I'm pressing all towards the, um, first the lagoon and then the, the stone and then the background. So we're gonna press them all in the same direction. All right, so go ahead and clip those apart. And let's move back here. And we're gonna go towards the lagoon, towards the stone, okay. And I could go put these right over in my um, my Elna press, which, oops, wrong way, wrong way, which I love, but I wanted to try to cut down on some of the getting up, getting down. When I'm here alone in the studio, I do get up a lot and, and walk around and walk back and forth because it's good exercise. Um, but here today, I just wanted to kind of keep it fast and on track so I'm not holding people up by walking to and fro. All right, now we're gonna do one last thing before we move on from these units. We are going to sew these to that citrus square. So when we do this, we want to make sure, when we lay this out, that we put the citrus square in the middle, all right, and that the lagoons are closest to the citrus and the stones are farthest away. So let's go ahead, and you're only gonna do that with two of the units. All right, and then I'm 
pick that up. Mr. Kim, you are doing a fine job, I might say. Oh, you're just saying that. Because it's true. You are awesome. And I could not do this without you. Wouldn't be nearly as good or fun. All right. So just as a reminder, which block are we working on on the quilt? D, block which D. Is, which one over there? Uh, the one that's right there by the flying geese, the, third, the second one down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, here, I want you to press the seams. Oh, wait. You know what? I don't have my handouts with me. <laughs> They're over there on the cutting table. Follow the pressing directions. Kind of depends. When um, I did this for the black uh, block, the black background, I think I pressed the seam. I'll look right here and see what I've got here because I've done this umpteen times. Nope, we're pressing it towards the citrus. So press your seam towards the citrus. Okay, there we go. Like that and give it one final press. Now before I sew this, um, I would take this over to the Elna press and give it a really good press so it's nice and flat. So here we go. Here's what it's going to look like. And now we have to sew the little um, corner units together. But first, there, like that. First, we have to make our little half square triangles. And I got some tips and tricks for you on this, on how to make them perfect. Because I really want people to see how great they can be. So what we're gonna do is I've got a little what to do and what not to do thing here. Come on in, Mr. Kim, over here. And I did some close-up photos. What you can see here, and I've sewed these, Oops, let's see. Hang on, hang on. Sorry. Oops, delete. Having trouble getting in here. Okay, here we go. Facebook Live. All right, let's start here. When you're sewing your little half square triangles, it doesn't matter if you put like this side through first and sew down or the point side through. It doesn't matter. But when you're coming to what either when you're starting or you're coming to the end see the little lopped off edge the stitching needs to come right to the point of that lopped off edge all right so you need to and i'll show you when we start sewing how to do that how to hold your unit so this is what it looks like a lot of times people get careless and i this is what not to do they get careless, they're coming along, and all of a sudden they just kind of veer off, all right? If they don't come all the way down to this tip, it, it doesn't make a pretty half square triangle. So, and I'm not recommending that anybody sew over their units twice, but I sewed the first seam of what not to do in red, and then I sewed that same unit in black thread showing the difference. So you want to sew straight down till it comes to the point of that little lopped off edge. You either want to start or stop right here. Do not let it veer off. Okay, this is typically what happens. People, whoops, whoops. People will come down and they just are careless and they veer off. Also, here's what not to do with the red thread. They're coming down, here's the point. Instead, they started at the lopped off point, the lopped off edge, and they're sewing down and then they veer off. They just kind of veer off. That does not make a pretty half square triangle, all right? You want it to look, again, I've sewed over it so you can see that you don't want to, to veer off the edge. You want to keep going straight. All right, so that's a little demo to help you see how to make these perfectly. All right, I'm done with that for today. And let's go ahead and line these up. So now you've got your background um, side B triangles, and all you need to do is start with your royal or your magenta, it doesn't matter, and line them up or put them together so that we have uh, right sides together again my, my white is a solid so it doesn't matter but I put this right sides together and you can either start at the lopped off edge or you can start at the point it doesn't matter I think I'll start at the point only so the white is up and you can see so I'm gonna put my foot down and you want the first bite of the needle to go right in the fabric all right and we're just gonna sew these now watch as I come down here it's a little harder I'm going to try to show you slowly. I'm going to slow this machine down. So you want to go 
right to the point of that lopped off edge right there let's do another one it's hard I'm trying to hold my hand out of the way but I want to show you again so that you can see this time I'll do it this way see if that's any better whoops Mr. Kim's standing right here so I'm, I'm not getting sorry about that honey there I'm trying not to get in your way. I know, you know. So I'm leaning way off to the right so we can align these edges so he can get right down in there. You can go even closer if you want. And I'm going to use my scissors and see how we want to just keep that going right to that point. There, perfect. That's exactly how it should look. Yay! All right. Everyone see that? All right. So we're going to keep going with those. Where's my other blue ones? Did I lose? Oh, they're on the floor. They fell on the floor. Whenever you have lost some pieces, look on the floor. <laughs> or, or find Cheeto. Sometimes he runs off with them. No kidding. All right, so now we're just going to sew all of these little half square triangles. And I can speed it back up because it doesn't take quite so long. And Mr. Kim, I think we're good here if you want to go set it up. Okay. And um, all the close-ups are done for right now, I think. And I know his arms get a little tired, so we're going to have him set it up on the tripod. And you'll be able to see what I'm doing from a different angle. And I'm going to just keep sewing so we can keep moving along. Because you're on the shorter line mic now, uh -oh. I'm going to pass this across. That's fine. Here we go. Yeah, I sure am. Am I not? Okay. Okay. There we go. I am on the shorter mic. All right. So now I'm starting with the magenta. And I'm matching up the magenta triangles. And I'm just going to sew those. And you can go as fast as you feel comfortable doing. Okay? And I want to be mindful of the time. Because we did have some mic issues. So sorry. So I'm going to do some of these. We're going to press some. We're going to square some up. And then I'm going to show you how to assemble the units, and then we're going to move on. Okay. Somebody noticed Karen K. Buckley scissors. Oh, I love Karen K. Buckley scissors. I have all of them, and I love them. If you have never had a pair, she has two kinds. She has kinds with the micro serrated edges. <gasps> Thing of beauty, let me tell you. And then she has some new ones that have just the straight shear blade and they're they both are wonderful so check those out all I'm right so noticing you have the hp foot on yes oh i can't i just love it it's my favorite all right so there you go let's press some all right and good i'm going to cut some apart here we're going to press i do want to be mindful of the time it is a little later than i had intended for this block because we got a little waylaid. So now you're going to press um, the, in this case, I am pressing towards my solidish fabrics, but it's because I have a white background. If you have a dark background, you're going to want to press the other way. It's really okay as long as you're consistent and either press them all towards the black background or the dark background or all towards the, um, the, solidish fabrics or your jelly roll fabrics that's what you want to do all right so now what we need to do is square some of these up and i want to show you how to do that over at the cutting table so unfortunately mr kim i think that means you have to pick it up and move again i think I can. we'll do that. one more and then we'll come and sit down and assemble the block okay so when you have these done you think well why should i have to true these up well you don't really but you do have to get rid of the dog ears because remember the dog ears are the cellulite of quilting they leave lumps and bumps in your units that you just don't need <laughs> that is my own quote you can quote me on that now come over here mr kim i want you to see 
that it doesn't take long to lay this down. I'm using the precision pre-cuts ruler and I line this up with the two and a half inch line. So if you cut accurately and you sewed accurately, you will see there's really nothing to true up, but I like to take this opportunity to do it anyway, just to make sure if there is any weirdness, I can get rid of it right here. And I always put my 45 degree line right on these units and I just lop these off. And it doesn't take long at all to do this, all right? Just do it as you go. It's very fast and very easy to do. And it will make a huge difference in your blocks as you assemble. Just get rid of the schmutz, okay? There's that term again. Yep. You just want to get rid of the schmutz, all right? Let's go back over. Wait, I'm, gonna, I'm all tangled up here. All right. So let's go back over. And I've got my step outs ready to go here. So I can just jump right in because I want to get through all of this. All right, let's put all of our little pieces over here. And look, with the magic of TV, <laughs> the magic of late night sewing in my studio. <laughs> there you go. I've got all my pieces ready to go. Here we are. Now, <laughs> this mic thing is really going to be tricky. All right. Here we go, but we don't let that deter us, right? So now we have this already sewn, and I want you to lay out your, um, you had some magenta squares, four of those, and you're gonna lay those out, and each little four patch unit in the corners gets um, laid out like this. Here we go. I'm gonna pull these, out. some of these are already kind of pre-sewn a bit. Here we go. There you go, you can kind of see the block now. Everyone can kind of see the block. All right, so every, every four patch in the corners gets two of the half square triangles with the magenta in the background, one half square triangle with the royal in the background, and one two and a half inch square of magenta. So I'm gonna sew one of these from start to finish and show you what that would look like. You're going to take, so I have it here where I'm gonna take the top right second column and put it over on the top left column and pick this up and come right to my sewing machine. We kind of did this last week. Did anyone try this technique for sewing units together where you're chaining them? What happened? Nope. It's not unthreaded. I don't know why it said that. All right, let's try again. Lower the presser foot, yeah, that always helps. There we go. Line up these units, so right to the edge, and then sew a couple of stitches in between. Now I'm going to go back over here and pick up the col second column and put it right sides together with the first column and carry this unit over. Don't spin it around when you're carrying it to your machine. And go ahead and sew that. All right. My blocks are a little shy of two and a half. I set my needle at... 8.7. Any other tips? Hmm, go to 8.9 if you can. Really, or just learn to keep your, your units a little bit tiny bit more to the left of the right edge of the foot. Just try not, if you're using the guide, don't have your fabric going up against the guide. It should just barely brush the guide or it should just barely touch the edge of the foot. That will do it. But um, move, your, move your needle just either to 8.8 .8 or 8.9. That's the beauty of having the needle positions so that you can make adjustments so that your units do come out. And it will take a little practice, but once you hit the sweet spot, oh, it's sweet. All right, so now we have our little units hooked together. And what we're going to do is come to the iron again and keep that over here. You're gonna take the unit that's facing you. I lay them out so it's parallel here. And I'm going to take the unit on my left, so it would be on your left, and you're going to flip it away from yourself, okay? And then we're going to take our iron, and we're going to press away on the right unit, press the seam away from your body, pick up the, the top unit on your left, and push, I don't want to say push, press the seam towards your body, okay? So the one on your right gets pressed away from your body, and the one on your left gets pressed towards your body. So what happens is when you come and you put these together, 
you have that seam allowance there. They're opposing uh, each other, so they snuggle in there real, real nice. Real quick question, what yep. brand of iron is that? Oh, it's a Panasonic cordless iron. I love it. Now, again, I have other irons in my studio. This probably is great for little presses like this, for pressing yards and yards and yards of fabric. Not so much because it loses the heat. So you can either use, you know, like a, a different steam iron or you can use your press. This is great for little presses and I love it because there's no cord, especially when you're on camera, you don't want to deal with the cords um, and getting tangled in the mic cords. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. That's not your fault, honey. And then we want to take this over and line this up and we're going to sew this and go right to the edge. Now, I've got a new tool that I use all the time. Where is my strip stick? It's on the floor. All right, there we go. We've got a really good point there in the middle. All right, now, I use something called a strip stick, and I apologize for having to bend down. The cat's knocked it off. Strip stick. <laughs> Are you looks... sure Mr. Kim didn't knock it off? <laughs> I don't know who knocked it off. When I like to press these seams open here. So what I like to do is use a strip stick. It's like a half round you'd see at a at a wear, um, and I'm sorry, at a hardware store that's been covered with fabric and some batting. And a really nice couple in Beaumont, Texas, make these. And it's if you want to look it up, it's called thestripstick.com, and it makes it so easy to press open your seam and your other seams don't get pressed out of the way. They don't get pressed backwards or anything. They stay out of the way. And then you get that really, really perfect point. So now we've got that sewn. Here's another one. I'm going to go ahead and sew one more here. All right. I've already got these chained. And I, again, the one that's closest to you, keep straight. The one that's on your left, push away. Here we go. Look at this. And you press the first seam away from your body, the second seam toward your body. All right, and then you're gonna sew these together. So now, let me think, that That's gives you the up idea. On, uh, strip stick. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Oh my goodness, it, it changed my life. So now you would sew your little four patch units together. And because of time, and we have a lot to cover, I know that you can sew these into the final block, okay? You're gonna sew your four patches, then you're gonna sew your four, two four patches to that center unit, like this. Leave this one out of the way. Sew these all together, and then you're gonna sew this row to the middle row to the next row. And that's all you would do. I think I hit all the high points here about the, the um, half square triangles, the way we're pressing, and I want to get to the next block. So I'm not going to put this one together right away. I will do it later and post it just like I'm hoping you will do. All right. Any questions before we move on to the next block? That I know of. I've covered them as they're coming by. Okay. So any thumbs up? Any hearts? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Oh, it's the little things that make us happy around here. <laughs> it's so easy to please. Uh, all right, so that is block D. I wish I'd have gotten the whole thing uh, together, but we have a lot more to do. So we're going to push that aside, grab my little short stubby mic cord. <laughs> and we're going to go back to the cutting table. Uh, you all are just so great. So to me, and I know it probably doesn't feel this way to you, but to me, it feels like y'all are right here in my studio with me and we're having just a great old time. And I love that. I love that you guys are here and we're, we're just doing this together. So um, thank you. Thank you for joining me. It really means a lot. I just have fun with you here. If you were here, I'd, I would pull up a glass of my freshly brewed, citrus-infused iced tea um, with no calories, and you would love it because I've been perfecting that recipe for a long time. All right, block D is done. Let's move on to block E. All right, here we go. This is the block we're making. Voila. Ah, Cheeto's back, see? Hi, Cheeto Puff. Yeah, what a good guy. All right, this is the block we're making. And you're going to want to flip over in your instructions. Now, I've got some tips here for this one, too. And I've got my fabrics all ready to go. And so we're going to start with our background strip. 
And the for first thing, and I'm going to kind of go through here pretty fast because we have a lot of ground to make up. We need four two and a half inch squares. So there's two, there's four. Remember, just go down and cut up. Do you see how fast I did that? With these lines, you can get to where you're just cutting really fast because you can see at a glance exactly the perfect size. So now we need eight side B triangles. And I think what I did here, Yes, sir. All right. We need eight side B triangles. I want to make sure when I did all my step outs what I was doing. So we're going to cut four times. Two. All right. Four. And Mr. Kim, any, any questions? You're yeah, any comments? real important one. Do you share your recipe for tea? Yes, I will. I will post it. Now you have to brew it and you have to brew your own. And then I use stevia um, to sweeten it a little bit, but I also use um, lemons, limes, and tangerines. And I infuse it just by putting them, washing them real good, cutting them, squeezing them, and then putting the whole fruit down in it really good yes I will share that that recipe all right rust oh this is a big one we have to cut from rust one two and a half inch square all right one rust okay one two and a half inch square from our rust and rust is done let's retire rust then we need lavenders and the lavender is we're gonna cut um, we're going to cut, what are we going to cut? Four, two and a half inch squares. So we need those. All right. There's two. Here's four. All right. Now with lavender, we also need eight, two and a half side B triangles. And again here, um, what I have is, oh, all right. This is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do a little trick here with you all. If you'll look a little lower, it says for the lavender, you need eight, two and a half inch side bead triangles, right? And then it says under lagoon, it says you need 16, two and a half inch triangles. What I'm going to recommend to kind of speed up the process is that you take your strip of lavender and your uh, lagoon and you put them right sides together like I've done here. We're going to cut our units together this time, at least eight of them, and then they'll be ready to sew. We won't have to sit there and finger put them together. They'll already be together. So let's do that right now. We need eight lavenders and we need 16 lagoons. So that means we're going to cut a total of eight pairs of lavender and lagoon. So watch here. Here's two or I'm sorry, one pair. And it, if you wanted to cut your strip down, you'd need about 14 inches to get eight. How did I know that? <laughs> I, I figured it out ahead of time because I don't want you to waste your fabric, but you don't even have to trim it down. You can just layer your strips together, cut your eight units. All right, cut your eight units. What do we have? Four, did I cut four? Yep. We still need four more. Now, do you see that these are already together? These are already to sew. That's how much easier it is to do it this way. When you can kind of think ahead and know, ah, I'm going to have to make some lavender and lagoon half square triangles. I'm just going to cut the fabrics together and then I don't have to fool around with putting them together at the sewing machine. They're already stacked. I just need two more. So right. while everybody's sewing and or cutting, Liz Mosier says she can't use artificial sweetener. Not yeah. even stevia? Stevia is natural. Stevia comes from a tree. Yep, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, stevia is 100% natural. And some people are recommending no sweetener at all because they like yeah, unsweetened. Yeah, and that, that is the reason why I like to infuse it with the citrus. So I use one lemon, one lime, and then I use, for three quarts, I use the four tangerines. I know, like those little halos or cuties and squeeze it in there. So it, you're getting your vitamin C and it makes it a little sweet. So, and this is all I, I 
ended up with. But you know what? Don't throw this away because you might need it for a little double rectangle unit later on. You can trim it down to one and a half by two and a half. So don't pitch that. All right. And the last thing we need to do is cut eight side B triangles with our lagoon. And these will get paired up with the background. Could I have paired this with the background to start? Yes, absolutely. So if you're just watching right now and you decide to go back and cut later, yes, you absolutely could put that with your uh, background strip and cut eight pairs of your lagoon and background. Now this block, what makes it tricky is the pressing and how and it, the longest part of making this block is laying it out once you have all the half square triangles. So I'm not going to actually sew these this time. I do already have them. This is a place where I can kind of gain some ground on some of the time that we lost a little bit because I've already done this. So don't stress. <laughs> no stress. This is the no stress zone. <laughs> You're in my class. No stress. You've got plenty of time to go back and do this. I've got everything cut now. I will go and sew one of these little units over here. And I've got the short cord. So let's move back, Mr. Kim. You don't have to come on this side. You can set it up. Because I know your arms do get tired. No. Nah. You are very strong. You are my Superman. There is no doubt. And you know what? I will need my little um, steady Betty with that, that Cheeto is laying on. Can you show everyone what he's doing right now? <laughs> yes, he's helping. He's guarding it. So if you could go get the, there's two steady Bettys there. Just get the top one because it has this block on it. He's I'm going to just. Gonna just sure it's warm. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that, um, that my unit. Uh, of my little lavender and lagoon stays together and then I'm going to go ahead and sew this unit and you can put it on my left over here and then everybody will see you. No, you're supposed to come this way, silly. Well, the cord is in Hi, there. Cheeto. Hi, did you decide to come over and visit? Yeah, I see that. Now, I will need also my book with the, with the instructions because the, it's all about the, the pressing. We need to be very mindful Hey bud, hey bud, you're gonna have to like not be here right now. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'm sorry, guy. Dad, help. I'm coming. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so he sorry. Says that's my job. <laughs> He's ready to just lay down here. Oh my goodness. All right, <laughs> I have this all laid out. You can see underneath here, I have the black or dark background version laid out in, in step out form. I also did it in the light version because here it really is. We're going to just kind of talk through it here. It really is about um, the pressing. All right, let's just talk about the pressing. And I made some notes here when it says under block assembly here, this is what you need to follow really, really closely. So when you are making your background, fabric and lagoon half square triangles, you're going to press the seams of four of those. Remember, there's a total of eight half square triangles with background and lagoon. Separate them into two piles. All right. And you're going to press four of them towards the background fabric and four towards the lagoon fabric. All right. And it's all about making when you lay these out. This is really just squares and half square triangles. This whole block is just squares and half square triangles. But based on how you press the seams, they will snuggle together very perfectly. That's why we're taking the time to really emphasize which way you press the um, seam allowance. So with your lagoon and lavender units, same thing. You have eight of those and you need to press four towards the lavender and four towards the lagoon. Once you have done all that, then you can lay these out. All right. And again, the first thing I do is go and sew this unit with the rust in the center and the two background squares on the ends. All right. So just lay that out and then you'll also need the two little units like this. So what this really is, it becomes a modified nine patch essentially. And we're going to make three rows, a chunky row, a skinny row and a chunky row. And then you would sew row to row to row, getting ahead of myself a little bit. All right. Now, once we've sewn those little units together, 
Now we want to do the same thing that we did last time. So I'm going to move this aside so that you all can see exactly what I'm doing. Here's one of those little four patch units. We have, we have um, two with the lagoon and the background. We have one half square triangle with the lagoon and the lavender, and we have one lavender square. So what we're doing here is if I turn these over, can you see the difference? It just takes, the, the longest thing you'll have to do on this block is figure out how to lay them out. And the diagram is right on that page. Just take your time. This one, I have the seam pressed towards the lagoon. This one, the seam is pressed towards the background. When I put these right sides together to get ready to sew them, those little seams snuggle so perfectly that you're going to get really nice points. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to sew this. Again, I'm taking column two, flipping it to column one, sewing, doing a few chain pieces. Now I'm going to take the lagoon and lavender half square triangle, put it right sides together with the lavender square and sew that together. Wait a minute, there we go. All right. All right, here we go. Look at that, see? Because, are they seeing that real good? Because when you have those seams that are, are opposing and you can snuggle them together, you get the nicest points. And that's what we want. So now we're going to do the same thing. Take this little guy over here to the pressing, pressing area and do that same thing. It's again, it's a four patch. Press the one on the right away from you. Press the one on the left towards you. All right. There we go. Now, when you when you pick it up again, the, the beauty of this method is you know which two sides to put together. You won't get it wrong because they're already attached and that seam is facing towards the presser foot. When I put it down here like this, okay, line these up real good. Hold on to them. See, I don't use pins. Very rarely do I need a pin. Because if you've set, if you've sewn, or if you've cut, sewn, and trimmed, gotten rid of your dog ears, your units should be ready to go. And if they're accurate, you, you just don't need pins. So that when you open this, you've got this beautiful, beautiful unit. Okay? And then this little guy would fit right up here. Well, I guess I should go ahead and press it. And this little guy. Again, I would want to give this, these units a quick press in the Elna press over here like this. And now I'm ready to sew this block, this unit to this, to this. And I would sew this together and then combine all of these. So I know we kind of went through this one a little fast and I'm sorry, but now we have plenty of time to do the last one. Um, so don't worry, don't stress. Take it just a little bit at a time, make marks on your pages. I've actually three hole punched my, my whole pattern and put it in a folder. And I've made little notes to myself and follow the directions with all the little white arrows showing you which way your seams go. If you lay them out just like this and you do small little groups, this block is a cinch to put together really and truly. So no worry about that, you'll get this. All right, any questions? Anything before we move on to block, what is it, D-E-F? Block F, are we ready to move to block F? Cool, all right, we'll set this little guy aside and we will head back one more time over to the cutting table. Mr. Kim, you are doing such a good job of keeping up with me. I appreciate that's it. That's no easy job. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so while you're moving, I gotta ask this question. Yes. So you know how you're working with strips? Yeah. And then a little while ago, you had to change the microphone and it put you in a precarious position. Is that true meaning of strip quilting? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's no excuse for Cheeto and there's almost no excuse for Mr. Kim at this point. <laughs> Are we seeing any laughter out there? Any laughing emojis? Well, we got the delay. So yeah. All right. Maybe, All right. maybe people didn't like it. <laughs> 
I thought it was good. Uh, I'll back you up. Okay, here's block F. This is a fun one. I love this block because we get to make little pinwheels and pinwheels are so much fun to make. So I've got some great things for you here and we're gonna flip our, our hand out over to block F, all right? We're gonna move in, move in right along. Okay, we're gonna take this up and I've got my, my strips all ready to go again and we're gonna follow the cutting just as it's shown. We're gonna need some background fabric, some two and a half inch squares. We need four two and a half inch squares. And for those of you who have the Jelly Roll Ruler, of course you can use the Jelly Roll Ruler for this. It's every bit as wonderful as the Precision Pre-Cuts. It's just smaller, handier. I just wanted people to see that the Precision Pre-Cuts is also very great. It's, it's like the Jelly Roll Ruler on steroids. It does more. Right. <laughs> now we need 16 side bead triangles from our background fabric. And let me go over here. I think what, no, you know what? I'm not going to cut them from that because I'm going to skip that for a minute. And I want you to skip the, the background triangles too for a moment. Let's move on to Azure. Azure here. We just need one two and a half inch square. Let's get that baby cut. Let's hold off on those side bead triangles for a moment. All right. Now we're gonna go down to orange and we need four two and a half inch squares from orange. Okay, and next time if you, like I said, for the next class, if you wanna go ahead and pull all your strips for the next three blocks, G, H, and I, I think, is that right? D, E, F, G, I. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's correct. Hello, oh my goodness. What time is it? All right, G, H, and I. All right, so now I've cut all of our squares. Our squares are done. Now what I have done and what I want you to do, because I know you can, is put your, your purple, or I think we call it what, grape, and a background strip together. You can do, use a half strip if you want. All right, I wanted you to put them right sides together, okay? And then I want you to put your background and a green right sides together, like this. And then we are going to line up Oh, we're getting we're getting fancy people we are we're getting fancy all right <laughs> we're gonna put all of those strips together I have a background and a grape and a, and a background and a green right sides together and I'm layering those and we are gonna cut our pinwheels and we are going to need eight of each so we need here's one of each little unit so I have one pair of grape and background and one pair of green and background rotate the ruler and the reason for doing this is I know you're getting enough experience using this ruler that you can do this there's two units here's three units here's four units I'm a little ahead of myself see how fast it goes when you don't have to cut singles of everything and you can be efficient but accurate <laughs> it's very very important to be efficient and fast is good as long as you can cut accurately okay here's six and if you lose track another thing that i know is if if you always um when especially if you're a right-hander okay and it works for left-handers but if you're a right-hander whenever you have a straight cut here that means you've cut an even number if you have the diagonal cut it means you have an odd number so i know i have just by looking at it i'm like oh i have six because that's an even number now i know that i can lay this down and this will be seven because there's a diagonal edge. Okay, just a little weirdness there I can share with you about how to keep track of how many you're cutting. I like to share these little helpful tips. There we go. We're done cutting block F. We're done. That's it. So now we're going to move over and sew. All right. We are going to sew. And I'm taking my steady buddy with me that I love. And I'm going to take my book with me this time and my short microphone cord. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, if you can't laugh at things, life becomes just too serious, and that's no fun. There are times to be serious, but right now, this is meant to be lighthearted and fun. And we're doing good on time, so I think I'm going to really sit here and sew with y'all. And if you're still cutting, that's fine. Still cut. It's no problem. And I'm going to go ahead and lay out some of my pieces here just to kind of make it easier. Okay. And any questions coming through? Sorry, I've been keeping up with yeah, you. That's okay. But I also noticed that the Janome folks have been answering questions. Thank and you, Janome ladies. Answering, I answering just love questions. you. I do. All right. Hey, there was a comment I read last night. I think her name was Sue Young. Is there a Sue Young out there? She wrote and she says, my blocks are wonky. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to have trouble with my blocks going together in the quilt. And I responded to her, and, and but I want to share that with you because I think a lot of you are feeling like, oh no, my blocks may not be perfect. They may be a little wonky. Hey, here's the beauty of this quilt. None of the blocks have to be sewn together in the quilt. And I thought about that purposely when I did the design. So really, there are going to be background strips of sashing in between so that you don't have to worry about your blocks having to intersect with other blocks, which makes it really freeing and liberating to know that if your blocks aren't perfect, they'll never show in the finished quilt. You like that? That's, that's an awesome thing. So don't worry. Believe me, hang in there with me. See this through. Don't get discouraged. Just keep going and you will improve. Every week you're gonna get better. You're gonna see improvement. Now somebody else reached out about the, the handouts themselves and said, all right, in one of the um, blocks that we did last week, we ended up having to cut a three and a half inch unit from a background piece and it wasn't listed on the home page. Well, I did that on purpose and I'll tell you why. On the page in your handouts where I tell you everything to cut for your background up front, those are all the units and pieces and sizes that you will need to assemble your quilt top. I also listed 10, I think two and a half inch strips and we're using those for the blocks. As we go, there may be a point where you do have to go back and cut uh, a three and a half inch square or a rectangle or something other than the, what was listed. I just didn't want to list absolutely everything on that chart because it would confuse people. They would not know, it would be so many parts and pieces they could become overwhelmed. So everything in the chart originally is all about assembling the quilt, except for the 10 two and a half inch strips, which you will use for your blocks. There may be an occasional unit that you have to cut, uh, but that's okay from your background. That's all right, we will cut those as we tackle each block, so don't panic. I did that on purpose, so you could. it was a nice, manageable chunk of, of cutting, and that way you had it set aside. Yes? So, two questions. Number one, what uh, is the maker of your cabinet? Ah, this one, I have two. That one is a, uh, no, it's koala, horn. No, koala. Sorry, it's very old. This one I've had a long, long, long time. This one's brand new and I love it. It's an aero cabinet and they had the extra large cutout with the plastic insert for my M7. Plus there's an extra drawer unit right here that extends my space. There is a flap in the back that would come right out and it really extend the space. But since my studio is kind of small and I, I wanted to keep my other cabinet for my 15,000 and for the embroidery, um, I just put the, oh, there we go. I put the little, um, the little extension flap down for now. But it has a little, a nice little door here that closes everything up, which is kind of nice actually because I can sink the machine. I have a, a white piece of wood that fits over it. So, you know, this is our front door right here. So when we have guests, it's probably nice that I kind of have things tidy and my machines put away for the time being. So that's, that's the answer to that. This one's an arrow and that one is koala. So there's lots of good 
good uh, ones out there. And I know Janome is carrying another brand, um, Eddie Crest. Eddie Crest is a wonderful brand and they have some beautiful cabinets and you need to check those out at your local Janome dealer. Um, but they didn't carry white for, um, for the M7. So I ended up opting for an arrow so I could keep all my cabinets and, and furniture white in here. Great question. Okay, what was the other one? What's the website for the strip stick? It's called www.thestripstick.com. All one word, the strip stick. Okay, those are good questions. I'm almost done with my half square triangles here. Okay, got two more. See how fast they go? Especially when you're sharing time with a friend. The time goes much faster when you're, you're sewing with a friend. And I love that you all are here. And I really think of you all as my friend. And I just hope that our paths have crossed or will get to cross at some point in the in the future. I really do, um, because I just I'm so glad that you chose to spend some time with me and that you're participating in this fun block of the month blitz uh, quilt. And thanks to Janome for wanting to do this. You know, just to for partnering with me to do this so that we could do something to make life better for you all during these, these uh, COVID times. I know we're starting to pull out of that and um, hopefully you all have come through unscathed, but um, I know this has touched a lot of people in a lot of ways. Okay, so now I have all of my little half square triangles done and you're just going to follow the directions as far as pressing as listed. Now I'm gonna move over here to my little step outs just so I can be mindful of the time um, and I have some units here so I went ahead again sew that center strip together so with the azure and the two oranges and the two background fabrics on the end and then always start with the easiest parts and pieces then sew your little two rectangle or your squares together to make little rectangle units and now let's move into the pinwheels so I'm going to move this out of the way. So I have some things I need to talk to you about pinwheels, some things that you might not even have considered. And Mr. Kim, you don't have to do anything except tell me if I'm holding these upright. When you are making your pinwheels, there's actually, you have to pay a little bit of attention to the orientation of your half square triangles because if you're not paying attention to this, you could sew them incorrectly and then it will look kind of weird. What do I mean? All right, let's take a pinwheel unit. Now, can you see this in the camera okay? All right, pretend that the red line is on a clock. It's noon, it's 12 o'clock, that's the red line. Coming up to 12, where I have my red arrow, you will see that half square triangle. I have the darker fabric, or in this case, it would be your jelly roll fabric, okay? Not your background, coming up to 12, all right? And you can see that the jelly roll triangle, that little triangle touches the 12 o'clock in, in the, the clock illustration here. Now, the reason I point that out is, if you're not paying attention, you might do this. You might rotate them so that the background fabric is coming up to 12. Do you see that right there where I've got the red arrow? All right, the reason I'm pointing that out is it doesn't really matter which way you end up choosing to do this, but it matters that with these little four pinwheel units that you're consistent to yourself, meaning you need to have the pinwheels either all having the solidish fabric coming up to 12 or all having the background fabric coming up to the 12 because if you do one pinwheel one way and another or three pinwheels one way and you're not paying attention and you do another pinwheel where the background fabric's coming up to the 12 it will look like a mistake and if you put it in your quilt someone will walk up to it and say did you mean to do that <laughs> so just pay attention to your pinwheels and how you're going to lay your um, lay them out. So my preference, my personal preference, and this isn't to say that you should do it this way, 
but my personal preference is this way so that I have the solidish fabric coming up to 12 o'clock because I feel like it looks really straight and pretty. I don't know, I've seen, I've done pinwheel quilts where when you have the darker fabric past the 12, like it's pointing to the one o'clock, sometimes it gives the illusion of leaning to the right. It, it, it's an illusion, it's an optical illusion thing. Doesn't mean that it's wrong and you can certainly choose this way. I've just gotten in the habit of preferring this way because to me, it looks it looks more um, symmetrical or just more squared up or straight but you just need to pick a side and stick with it so did, was that a, a good illustration did that kind of explain what you need to pay attention to when you're laying these out okay i wanted to have those images for you to make uh, make it really clear i really like to try to explain things it's not enough to tell someone to do something some way you need to explain why so that kind of makes it uh, easier to understand okay so on mine i chose to have all my fabrics coming up to the 12 o'clock all my pinwheel fabrics so let's go ahead and lay those out let's start over here with my little and i'll move this away if i can here my little green pinwheels and here you go i've got mine so uh, for my perspective here and even for yours the um, solidish fabrics coming to the 12 o'clock point okay so i've laid mine out all mine are laid out it does help to lay your pieces out after you've sewn your half square triangles cut off all the dog ears lay them out make sure everything looks right sew your squares together now we're going to tackle those pinwheels we're going to pick up the right column flip it over to the left column line them up and then we're going to sew we have time to sew i love that part okay and do we have any questions mr kim no not so far okay Just a lot of good comments great awesome thank you all for being so supportive and kind you have no idea how much that means to me I have to admit, I'm kind of a tender heart. <laughs> and if I feel I've let anybody down or, you know, I, I just, I don't like that. I want to, I want everyone to um, just feel the love. Okay, so now we have our little units, our little pinwheel units. You can open them up, just take a little peek. Make sure that you've snuggled those seams. Remember, I pressed them all the same way, so the seam snuggled. So now I have really nice points right there. Now we can go and press. Oops, and my iron cooled off, which means I get a little chance to have some tea because I'm getting thirsty. Rhonda wants to know when you're coming to Australia. <gasps> as soon as somebody from Australia invites me, I've never received an invitation to go to Australia. So if you have a group or an organization, I'm telling you that would, Mr. Mr. Kim, that is his number one bucket list destination. Please get someone to invite us to Australia. We may have to just come for vacation and Rhonda, I'm looking you up. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to say, hi, we're here. <laughs> Can we come hang out? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I wouldn't stalk you. Okay. All right, I've got that press. Remember, one on the right, press the seam away. One on the left, press the seam toward. They're connected by that little thread. So now we're ready to sew. This is a perfect pinless pinwheel. You ready for this? Now make sure those little seams are snuggled in there real tight. You can kind of feel it with your finger. Again, remember the, the illustration I gave is when your seams are opposing and they're snuggled in there just right, when you run your finger over it, it will feel like a closed zipper would feel. When they're not aligned properly, it'll feel lumpy and bumpy. So we want that closed zipper feel. And then we're just going to sew right up to the point and then realign our edges and go right to the edge. Now, do you think it'll be Christmas morning right here when I look? It's always hard when, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for a demo. Oh, pretty darn good. Yeah. 
that's not bad at all. Let's do another one. Let's see. Oh, I got four down here. I've got two. I've got a purple one here. Okay, let's do the purples because we have time. Okay, any other questions out there about anything? Not just about this block. You can ask about the other blocks. You can ask anything you want. Anything at all. Or just tell us where you're tuning in from. Do we have any more from overseas? Usually we have our Norway ladies. I wonder if they're there today. I did see Canada. Yay, Canada. Oh, Canada. I'm getting a little silly here. All right, we've got our little pieces. Need more tea. I need more tea, yeah. Doesn't take much. How All big right. is the finished quilt? Ah, I have to look that one up. Uh... That one, I do not know off the top of my head. I, it's in here somewhere. It's Are somewhere. Are you looking that up? Got the Netherlands. Yay! Toby saying hi to Cheeto. <laughs> Is Toby hiding? Yeah, he's very shy. He's a shy guy. He really is. He's, but he sleeps right next to my head every night. Little Mr. Tobes, Meister. For the new people, you might want to tell them how to go back and see the first class or your other Yes, so Facebook all of the videos, all the videos we've been doing since March or April are available on the Janome Sewing Machines page. You'll just have to scroll back through, but they're all there. They're all there. And all of these classes are available to watch here again on this page, the Janome Sewing Classroom, or I think you can find them on Janome Sewing Machines page two, but for sure right here, for sure. So, oops. So you have people from the UK. Yay! All right. Oh yeah, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> All right, let's stay. Oh, I've got one more. One more I already pressed and I've got one more seam to do because I would love to get this block together for you, and we have time, so this is good. All right, let's go ahead and sew this one. The beauty of doing step outs in advance to make sure I have everything that I want to cover with you all while you're here with me. So what do you need to do to make this a king size? Ah, that would take a little finessing. Um, you could make more blocks and just add more rows. You could do that. Um, you know, get creative. You could make the blocks again. I would just make every block again. And I honestly think you have enough fabric to do that. Or you could switch out some of the colors and do each block in a different color combination. That would work too. Okay, strip sticks back because I want to press open this seam. And whenever I have a little four patch unit or a little pinwheel unit like this, I like to press the seam open. I know there's a lot of different ways out there. Some people like to smash the centers or some people twirl the centers. For me, I just like to press the seam open because look, you, you end up, there's eight fabrics coming together at that point and you want it nice and crisp. So when you press the last seam open, it doesn't mess with the direction of any of your other seam allowances and it makes that center point really nice and flat and pretty. So there you go. Let's see about this one. We're gonna press these open. All right, just get your finger in there. That's another great thing about this. You don't burn your fingers because once you get it started, you just follow behind your finger and just press and, and none of the other seams get in the way. It's really wonderful. Just so here's a, a comment. Somebody says that today, every time they followed a link that said it would take you them to the today's class, it took them to last week's class. I think I even had that problem one time. Oh. I realized I just needed to refresh, pull oh. down on the screen, and it refreshed it, and took me to today to today's class. So oh, good to know. To Thank it. you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I did not know that. Good. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See, that's why you're the engineer. That's why you get the big bucks. <laughs> so here's a, a new person. Hi! Do you, do you have to have a serger to make a quilt? I'm no. very new. I don't know much about anything. Oh, no. I just bought a C30. Awesome! No, um, I, I don't even own a serger. I don't own a serger. I, I think that there's one in my future, maybe, Mr. Kim, 
but <laughs> I, hey. I've been quilting for almost 30 years and never used a serger. I use a sewing machine and my perfect quarter inch foot and with the M7 and all the wonderful features on it or any of your machines, all you need is a quarter inch seam allowance. That's it. That's real. And that was a great question. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and sew this row together. Okay, I'm going to take these and sew this together. And if you've followed the directions for the uh, seam allowance on the little chart on the page, everything is pressed the right way. Everything will snuggle beautifully. And here we go. So while you're doing that, somebody says that they are allergic to wool. Is the strip stick due to wool? No, the strip stick is not. It's it's cotton. It's only cotton. It's cotton fabric. And then I think there's um, some flame retardant cotton batting inside, just a real thin layer. No, there's no wool whatsoever. But great question. Okay, and here here's we... another one. What's that you are using to iron on? That's the, oh, the pad or the strip? This the is the strip stick. This is just a wool pad. I have all my, I have three Steady Buddies. They're all in use right now. And you can iron right on the Steady Buddies. Really, uh, they're wonderful. But because it was easier for me to have these to carry from everything laid out over here, I used all of my Steady Buddies to, to kind of stack and carry. But normally, I don't use this one. Normally, I use a Steady Buddy and just um, press right on it. So... What's the value of using the Steady Betty to iron on? Um, it just that it makes everything so perfect. And if you ever pressed on a regular board and you sometimes got a shiny, I mean, it turns the fabric kind of shiny if you press too hard or um, that's, it doesn't happen on wool. But that also doesn't happen on your press. So if you have a press, that's, that's really the way to go. That's really the way to go. And Mr. Kim, can you um, turn on my press for me? So I can press the block when I'm done. And normally I use the press a little more than just this, but I was just trying to be expedient today. So let's see here. And then we're going to One, two, press or three dots. All the way up, all the way to the far. I think it's four. Yeah. So we're going to press these seams in towards the squares, away from the pinwheels. I'm just giving these a quick little press right now. And that's fine. Now, that's a, a great use for a little cordless iron. Now we're going to take this strip and we're going to put it right sides together. Oops, got a little pressed wonkiness here. Let me fix that. Somebody wants to know what your thoughts are on seam rollers. Oh, I like them. I actually have one here. Uh, somewhere. I had one. I have a seam roller. I actually like them. They work too, especially in a classroom setting or like in a retreat setting or somewhere where an, an iron isn't really accessible. Or if, you know, you just want to sit there and use a seam roller while you're at your machine. But I think, honestly, before you're done or before you put the whole block together, you want to take time to press with an iron. I mean, it's fine just for like pressing um, tentatively with a little seam roller, but ultimately you're, they're not going to give you as great a result with your overall blocks or bigger units as your press or a steam iron. And I do use steam. There is nobody asked this. I realize steam is our friend. <laughs> it can kill, <laughs> it can correct a variety of ills. Let's say that now, Yes, steam can be used incorrectly and pull things completely out of kilter and make everything wonky if you're stretching. But steam is wonderful. And here's the thing. Oh, can I give the, the, the little spiel about why you should use cotton thread as opposed to polyester? Now, I'm not saying throw your polyester away, but I'm saying don't buy any more for piecing. You want to use cotton thread, and here's why. <laughs> you're going to love this. Got to use the sound effects, though. Okay, here's why I use cotton thread with cotton fabric. All right, because if you put uh, water in your iron, okay, or you have your mister on your press, all right, here's what happens. Cotton thread has a little bit of shrink factor. So when you're sewing along, your threads interlock like this, right? You've got your top thread and your bobbin thread and they interlock, okay? And if you press, all right, when you press without steam or without moist heat, 
Okay, even if you have water in your iron, you say, I hate steam, put water in your iron and then don't push the, the little steam button, all right? Because the heat coming out of your iron, or that's why we use the mister on the press, is because what it does is when that, that moist heat hits your threads, they go and they sink down in there and they hold on for dear life. And I think if you lean down, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kind of like snap, crackle, pop, and like <laughs> yeah. Okay, you, really, you probably can't hear it, but I like to think you can hear it. Um, no, it really works. So polyester thread is great, but it doesn't have that little shrink factor that cotton thread does. And I, I don't mean it shrinks up. I mean, they just sink into the fibers of your fabric and hold on. So if you're sewing a long diagonal edge, you really want that because you want the threads to hold on and give your seam stability. So that is why you want cotton thread over polyester thread. So I'm gonna keep sewing here, but um, I just wanted to share that with you. And <laughs> uh, should I tell them the other story about, about why you can splurge on thread? Oh, I don't know, that's, that's probably a little too much. But every time you go shopping in your quilt store as they start opening up or they're your local dealer, you know, you don't always have to spend money. You can go and get inspiration and just visit with, with people there and your friends. But you know what? I think everybody can afford a little spool of thread now and then. And so now, you know, that's a, a good thing that if, if you're in the store and you really are not looking to buy anything special, pick up a spool of 50 weight cotton thread and just start adding a little bit at a time to your, your repertoire, your, your stash. All right, because um, you know, there's a time and a place for polyester and it's not bad, but it doesn't work as hard for you as cotton thread will. Okay. So you said 50 weight. Somebody asked the question, why, what weight do you recommend? 50, 50 weight, because that is great for piecing. It's not too thin and it's not too thick. Anything like 40 weight, um, it adds bulk in your seams. It's gonna make your blocks and units a teensy weensy bit smaller. Um, thread takes up bulk in your seams, it really does. After, if you've been sewing with a 40 weight, like um, silk covered cotton, which it's a very good kind of cotton to sew with, but not for piecing. Once you go to a 50 weight two ply cotton, you will feel like you've been sewing with rope up to that point. If you go back, it's like, oh my goodness, wow. I didn't realize there was such a difference. So that's why I like to recommend that you sew with 50 weight cotton. It makes a difference. Okay, these are such great um, chances to share these tips and tricks that will help you improve as you go. You go along. Okay, you put it out there so people want to know why can you splurge on... Um, maybe I should go in the other room. <laughs> Years ago, it was cool. I was young, but we were done having our children and we were living overseas and, and I had to go in a German hospital and have a hysterectomy. And my girlfriends from the guild all came in and they were all like, oh, we're so sorry for you. We're so sorry. And everyone was offering this sympathy. And um, I had a dear friend in that guild and she came in and she, <laughs> she came in by herself and she plopped down a spool of thread. And she said, honey, you're so lucky. Now every month when the rest of us are having to go out and buy those feminine products, you can go out and afford a spool of thread. <laughs> totally cracked up. So every month I go to the store and I buy a new spool of thread <laughs> because I don't have to spend that money on other things. So if I offended anybody out there, I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> Can I come back in now? <laughs> so that's why. Are we getting any thumbs up or hearts? Oh, please give me the hearts on that one. I hope I did not offend anyone. That would not be what I would want to do. But that's, um, I've always remembered that. With just her attitude was so cute. She's like, oh, honey, you're so lucky. Every month you just go buy some thread. And I have every month, just about ever, gone and bought some new thread and said, I'm so lucky. Wow, you're getting lots of hearts on that story. 
and laughs. Oh, good, good, good. All right, that was, I can tell that in a classroom. This is the first time I've ever told it publicly. So um, thank you for supporting me on that one. I think Mr. Kim is blushing 85 shades of red. Um, he's, he's a pretty modest guy, and he blushes better than anybody I know. So what I'm doing here is I'm sewing the last row together, and then I'm going to go over and give this a press on the Elna press, and you are going to see a thing of beauty. And we really covered a lot of ground today. Now, I have just a little homework for you all. All I want you to do before the next class, which, by the way, will be Saturday, Ju July. Oh, wow, I almost said June. July 11th. Same time, one to three, right here. Mark your calendars. And the last class for the last three blocks and the Flying Geese border will be on Saturday, July 25th from one to three. We might go a little bit over on that one. So give yourself maybe two and a half hours um, because we have a lot of ground to cover. But that, those are the dates. But what I want you to do is pull all the strips that you're going to need just for the next three blocks before we come together again, all right? Just pull them, press them, have them set aside. We'll cut together. If you feel comfortable cutting, that's perfectly okay. Go ahead and cut them, then we can sew together next time. So if you don't feel comfortable cutting some of those units, just hold off. We'll cut them together, but at least have the strip set aside and ready to go. Okay, last, or not last, but what was your question, Mr. Kim? So somebody wants to know your thoughts on pre-wound bobbins. Oh, they're fine. They're absolutely fine. I don't have a problem. Um, it kind of depends what the weight is, the weight of the thread, and, and you want to do a test first. Um, I just find it so easy to wind it here, especially on the M7, it has its own motor for winding bobbins. So I can be sewing and still winding bobbins, two separate motors. Um, but if you don't have that, just wind a couple yourself, or if you have the pre-wound bobbins, by all means, go ahead and use them. Okay, let's take this and our short cord, and let's go and press this on the press. Here we go. At least we worked out the problems with the mic and figured out it was the adapter, right? So we, oh, this is all toasty hot in here. I can feel the heat coming down. Ooh, I love this. And then you just do a little dance while it's waiting to beep. <laughs> Y'all, this has been so much fun. And you've been so great to put up with me and my silly little stories. Um, but look at this. Oh my goodness. It is such a thing of beauty. Now, I am not truing up my blocks just yet. I'm waiting till I get more done. And don't feel like you have to square them up. I'd rather till we get into this just a little more, or even at the end, and then we'll be using our precision pre-cuts ruler to go ahead and square them up, and I'll show you how to do it. Don't worry if they're a little bit short or if they're wonky. You're, each one is going to get better. I guarantee it. The more you do, the better you're going to get. It really does work that way. Trust me, I've never steered anyone wrong yet. Okay, any more questions? Because we have covered some serious ground today. Any more questions at all? Not that I so saw go across, but remember when I'm following you, I can't. I know, you don't. If anyone has some questions, now's the time to put it right out there. So, some people are saying that they love the Elna Press. Yeah, it's awesome. This is a good, um, anniversary or birthday present or you know for your Christmas shopping list um, but yeah then they have different models too um, I just find it really helps make everything just beautiful and flat and makes such a difference um, on your blocks so here's our little pinwheels for today and we had the little black version here too so and I am so enjoying seeing all your blocks please take time to share right here on this page or on the Janome Sewing Machines page. Post a photo of your blocks. If your kitties or puppies get in there too, all the better, makes it even better. Or your kiddos or your grandkiddos, all right? 
Um, and you know, if you are sewing with your grandkids or your kids and you want to share a picture, please do, please get them involved. I, I just have such a passion for getting young people involved in sewing. This is a great project. They can help you with little things, even the youngsters, even the little people, they can help you lay out your squares. You know, you can sit them in your lap. You can just encourage, 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 encourage. Yes, I know they probably shouldn't hold rotary cutters yet. And, you know, they need to be careful around irons. But there's small things that they can do to feel like they're a part of this. They can sort through and find the strips you need. Give them the legend of the fabrics. Show them the colors that you need them to pick out. Let You know, just let them get involved. That's a really good thing to just be encouraging. Oh, we have a question. Well, just remind them where they can go to get your rulers and... <gasps> yes. So the that first was... thing we want you to do is reach out to your local Janome dealer. All right. A lot of the Janome dealers are on board. I hope some of them were hosting watch parties. I knew they did last time. If, if you did today, yay, thank you. Um, and you start there. But if, if not, reach out to the customer service phone number at Janome.com. Um, there's also Janome Education at JanomeAmerica.com or Janome slash America.com. I think somebody's putting a link up. I have a couple links of places where you can get them and the rulers are available on my website as at the very, the very least, www.KimberlyEinmo, all one word, dot com. But please support your local Janome dealer first. If they are not available to help you or haven't opened yet, or for whatever reason they can't get them, we can help you. Reach out to me personally, message me on my page. I will get information to you. We will get them to you. I promise. We'll, we'll do everything in our power to get them to you. Yes. Okay, happy birthday, Judy Colby. Oh, happy birthday, Judy. Is today your birthday? Yesterday. And yesterday, and, and she said, oh, happy birthday. Okay. She says, this makes me happy. Oh, happy birthday. Another question is, will there be some help with putting the quilt together? Yeah, we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. And it's a little hard here. I'll have the blocks and we'll, I'll try to do some diagrams that I can show you on paper how it goes together. Um, we will talk about it in that last class. It's not all that hard, really. It's, it's not bad at all because there are actual strips of background fabric. And so you're just putting those between each row. There's spacer blocks in between each block. Um, there's spacers. So it really is, it just goes row to row to row. And then, or I guess I should say column. I'm sorry, column to column to column. And then we have the asymmetrical border last. So it really is not hard to put together, but we will go over that in, in depth on the last class. And don't forget to register for, um, at least just let us know you're coming or you're interested for the third class. Again, that's going to be Saturday, July 11th from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, where's Cheeto Puff? Cheeto! Cheeto! Oh, there he is. Come on, Cheeto. Oh, come here. You got to say goodbye, bud. I'm going to walk over here and entice him. He's snoozing. He's snoozing, but he needs to come over and say goodbye. Yeah. You need to come say goodbye to everyone. Everyone wants to say, oh, yeah. All right. I do have treats at my drawer. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on. Here you go. And a short cord. Come on. Kitty, kitty. Oh, I guess I'll have to go get him. Come on. He sees the drawer. Anyway, I just so appreciate you all being here today. See, Mr. Cheeto is never very far from us and he hangs out. He snoozes sometimes. There he goes. See, bud? And he's healthy and we're just so blessed that he is back to his normal old antics and keeping me on my toes because this guy is sure a love and sure makes us laugh. So any other last questions or, or comments? Today, we did good. We ended just on time. Sorry, I had to kind of go a little fast through those blocks. Don't worry, I'm here. I will be going back later today, reading through the comments, trying to answer, um, reach out to me. But yeah, I, I love it when you can ask questions or have comments here on this particular video so that other people can see them when I answer. You know, because other people may have, if you're thinking something, six other people, probably 26 other people are thinking the same thing. So um, we're just so blessed that you spent your afternoon with us from wherever you're watching from. 
please know that we take it to heart. And Mr. Kim, you do have to show, turn around and say hello to everybody. Come on. He's going to spin it around and say hi. <laughs> because we are honored that you give of your time to be with us and we don't take that for granted and we know that time is precious and you chose to spend it with us so we are grateful and so grateful Janome is so glad you're here too and you all have been so supportive with all our live videos and all the wonderful educators and the hard work that they've all put into sharing and providing and we're just so glad that you have made us a small part of your family so thank you and I will see you in a couple weeks. I know the 4th of July is coming up. Everybody, please stay um, safe and healthy. And, and we'll just see you back here in a few weeks for class number three. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.